So in this video, we're talking about ValleyBot, which is a type safe schema validation tool, similar to Zot, but faster because of its modular design. It's also faster in performance because of one smaller bundle size and also at, run, at runtime at execution, it just validates faster. We're going to implement it in Next.js uh, with this login form. I'm going to walk you through step by step. Now this is validating the form data inside of a server action in the context of the server, but you can use the same uh, schema to also validate the forms on the client side. So we're going to look at the code together here. So if I put in a test email here and then a password, it is going to log me in. This is not actually using a login service, it's just using the schema validation to show a form validation in the process and redirects the user back to the dashboard. So let's dive into the documentation first and then we're going to implement this in an XJS application. So let's get started on ValleyBot. Some highlights from a high level. As I mentioned, it's type safe. You can infer your types from your schema, so no reason to create duplicate types. You can write one schema and then use that for your types, but also execute that at runtime to validate any shape of data. So again, you can use it to validate complex objects. The bundle size is small. It's open source, fully tested. Because it has a modular design, uh, you can write more unit tests or it has 100% coverage for tests, many transformations and validation helpers, as you can explore in the documentation. So let's jump into actually implementing this. So for installation, you can install it through NPM or PMPM. I'm using PMPM. I've already installed it inside my Next.js app. I'm going to walk through our app in a second after we read through the documentation. But if you're following along, there's a link in the description to the source code. Our project is a copy or a clone of our next chat CN starter. So if you head to my repository, let's just open it up here and repos we have this next chat cn repo which is a template you can clone use this to create a new re new repository inside your own repo and then clone that that version into your local development this is using typescript tailwind css chat cn like light and dark theme so it comes built in with all of this already set up that's what i've used to create this project but you get also the source code for the project that we're building link in the description again uh, check it out for the next chat cn just before i forget it there's also a video walking through how it's, you would set up chat cn in next.js and use theming again link in the description if you're interested so the next step is use cases you could use it in server-side requests form validations on the client side browser state like things like cookies search parameters local storage and whatnot in comparison there's a little uh, comparison with Zot in terms of the design, modular design, and also the performance of the package. You can read through it if you're interested. The ecosystem of the technologies that already support this. One thing that I was interested to see is React Hook Forms. Uh, I have done videos on the channel with React Hook Forms and Zot as a schema validation tool. Now um, we may have an updated video to use ValleyBot instead of that. So read through that. Now, as far as defining schemas, this is very, very similar to Zot in that you would import everything from ValleyBot and use it to create the structure of your data. In this case, login schema, we have the object with an email property and a password. You have the concept of pipelines, which allows you to do multiple transformations. So, for example, here for the email, we say it needs to be a string and an email, it needs to end with this domain. So, and we set everything as the different stages of a pipeline for this email schema. So these two combined, it is going to allow you to create multi-step transformations and validations uh, with any type of data that you have. So if it detects an issue during validation, it will create an, a specific issue object. We're going to see this in action again. You can also pass in your own custom messages. So the first uh, optional argument to your functions is actually the message. So for example, here we're defining different messages that you can pass for each of these stages in your pipeline to have custom messages. So let's go ahead with the pipelines. We've already learned what they are and how we would go about using them. Again, we're piping different stages and transformations, trimming the email, 
making sure it's an email and ends with this specific domain to create our schema. And we would use that schema to actually validate our data. Now to parse our data, similar to Zod, we have two functions. One is parse that is going to throw an error if this data that you're passing doesn't validate against this schema. There's also the safe parse function similar to Zot, where it wouldn't throw the validation error. Instead, it's going to return an object with the issues property, as you can see here. So if it is successful, you're going to have an output property on your results object. But if you encounter any error, you're going to have an issues object inside of your results. Now, you can also use the is function as a type guard. So let's say I want to validate or check whether or not this data passes with this schema. I can use the is function and then this is going to return a boolean to say if it is valid or not. Now, before we dive into the code, I want to talk about two more things. One is inferring your types. And the second one is the issues object. So inferring types, you can infer the input types from your schema. You can also infer the output types, again, from your schema, like so. So there's no need to have TypeScript types. You can just infer your types from your schemas. And as far as the issues, let me just go ahead into the issues here just to show you what the issues object look like. There's different properties on the issues object that you get back. You can read through the documentation, but from a high level, I just want to show you how it looks like as far as formatting goes. So you're going to get an array of issues object. Each one has the properties that was mentioned above, kind, type, input, and the message and the path that was created. Uh, this is a little cumbersome if you were to loop through this uh, array to get your messages. So they provide a, an op, uh, a function called flatten that flattens the issues object and returns this object with a nested property on it. And inside of it, you could see keys uh, corresponding to the keys that you've defined in your schema and an array of issue messages for each one of them if they don't pass the validation. So with this out of the way, I just want to jump into our Next.js app and look at the implementation that we have over here. Let me just open up our app. From a high level, again, this is a Next.js app working with TypeScript, ChatCN, and Tailwind CSS. What I have created is a login page. So let's go through the login page. And then we have a simple dashboard page. Again, this is not an authentication. It's just showing form validation in the context of a login form. So the dash dashboard is where we would redirect the users once the form validation goes through. So let's just start from the login over here. Just a simple page. So let's go back to our app the home page, and then the login page. Now for the login form, I am using ShatCN components. So let me just show you. ShatCN has this concept of blocks where you can just copy and paste blocks of code. If you scroll down, there's some login specific forms. So this is the one that I have used. It's just a login form. So let's look at this one from a high level. If you're rendering this card component, a card header, we just go back to our application so you can see what we're looking at. So we have the card header, then I have a form and inside of it is the card content. And then I have the card footer with the submit button. So let's look at the implementation here because this is what it matters. We are using server actions to submit the form and then we're going to validate the data inside the server. We could have also validated the data in the client side using the same schema and I'm going to show you how you would do that. But as far as what I have implemented here, we have this form and this action here. So I'm using the use form state. Uh, this is a still use form state in the current version of Next.js. In the next version of Next.js 15, we're going to have use action state, which is, which is the underlying use action state from React 19. It's not stable yet. So the stable version is still using the use form state from React DOM. So to this, you have to pass in your own server action, which we're going to look at the implementation in a second. The second argument is your initial state. And this hook is going to return an array of two values. One is going to be the state. Or well, the first time around or before the form submission, this state is going to be your initial state. And then the form action is what you would pass into your forms. Now, the reason why I'm using this form instead of just passing your server action directly to your form, because you can also do that, 
is to use this state order return value from my server action because this state order return value from my server action is what I'm actually using to show error messages. So if this state actually contains an email, I know there has been an, a problem with the email, so I show that as an error message here. I'm going to show you what we're returning from the server action in a second. And similarly, if there's anything wrong with the password, I'm showing the error message over here. Now, a little note about this footer or the submit button here before we dive into the server action. We are using the use form state to hook into the transition that happens when we are submitting the form. This gives us a pending state back. This is the pending state of a parent form. This is why we needed to take our submit or abstract our submit button into its own component because this, just like the use context, reads the context of a parent provider, in this case a form provider, so enable so in order for us to be able to read the pending state of the form, we need to extract this to its own component like so, using this and the pending state. I'm just showing a different text and disabling it if the form is submitting. Pretty simple. We do have videos on the channel where I talk about use form state and use form status hooks in more depth. I'm going to include a link in the description. So if you're not comfortable with these two hooks, the new hooks, definitely watch that video and you learn in more details how to use them. So, so far, we have a form. We have used this to pass in a form action to our forms. Now, let's dive into our own server action. Now, our own server action runs on the server. We are using this use server directive up top that marks it as a server action. And I have defined it right inside of my login page. So let me just close this, this off. Inside of my login path or segment, I have the page, which represents the UI for the login. And then I have my actions. Uh, this way of organizing your code allows you to have your actions per segment if you want. You can also create an action file inside your lib and put everything there or an action file inside the app router. It doesn't really matter where it is. It's just for organization purposes that I have created it inside of my login. So if I need anything for my signups, logins, authentications, dashboard, I would just add the actions where they belong so it's better for organizing. Nonetheless, so our server action receives this state. This is the same state that our form had. This is the same state here. So it receives this state and also the form data. And form data is passing through because I have passed or you should pass um, in name attributes to your input. So name, email, and also the name password is going to pass this data inside my form data to my server action. Okay, so this is the form data that we're getting. First step, I'm creating an object from my form entries. This is going to return an array-like thingy that you can pass into object from entries and turn this into an object. Now that I have this object, I want to validate this data. This is where I'm using V or Valibot to safely parse this data against my login schema. So let's see where the login schema is coming from. I've created this lib folder. Inside of it, I have the schemas. Inside the schemas, I have a login schema. So I'm saying my schema is an object with an email property. I'm using the pipe to have different stages. It needs to be a string, non-empty, and email. Pass for the same thing, and minimum length. I've also provided custom messages. So that's using Valibot. Now I'm using this schema to validate the data that comes from my form. So I pass in safe parse and then the login schema and the data. This is going to give me the result back. I'm artificially delaying this process because I'm not talking to any database here. So if it is successful in real world, I would just log in, create a session or do whatever I need to do and then I redirect the user back to the dashboard. But if I don't have the success property, I've encountered some issues. I'm using the flatten function from Valleybot to flatten my issues object and turning them into something that I can read more properly. I'm creating my own error object, email. I'm accessing the nested property I mentioned comes on the issues when you use the flatten function. And inside of it, I just look to see if I have the email and the password. Now, remember the messages that are here are going to be an array of messages because an email, depending on our schema, can have multiple error messages, one corresponding to each of these stages. It can be the string, it can be the non-empty or email, and whatnot. 
So it's an array of issues or messages. So this error is what I'm returning from my server action and that's why I was using this user state form so I can get what was returned from my server action now inside of this state in case of an error it will be my error messages so so here I'm checking to see if this has an email property on it which means there had been a problem with the email I'm accessing the email and then the first message on it that's why I'm reading it through an array because it comes as an array of messages again multiple stages in the schema validation multiple custom messages possible and then similar thing for the password so let's test this out if I just submit this form without anything it says please enter your email email and password if I provide an email and then a short password it is going to pass that and also says here that it needs to be eight characters or more if I just type in more characters and log in the button turns into a pending state and then it redirects me back to the dashboard now if you also wanted to use the same schema to validate the data in the client side because why not why calling your server action if the data is not even valid so down here instead of passing the form action directly to the form you can pass in a function that receives the form data validates the form data and then calls the form action passing this form data now as far as the validation we can do the same thing we were doing here let's copy the valleybot import into our client component and then down here we can do the same thing we were doing here by turning this object or form data into an object first and then passing it to the safe, safe parse function of our valleybot so let's also bring in the same schema we've defined inside of our lib and then you can do whatever you want to do with the result so handle the error here and only call your server action when the validation actually passes through on your client side so two ways of just showing that you can use this schema validation on the client side and also on the server side it makes sense on the client side because why calling your server action or your server if the data is not even valid or doesn't pass a validation in the client side but also even if you do it here on the client side you always want to also validate the data on your server you, you should not trust anything that comes from the client side even if you have validated it you should still validate the data no matter what in your server side in your server context in your server actions as an extra step you can also validate it in the client side but this server action is a must or the validation on the server side is a must and that's a wrap for this video folks we used valleybot which is a type safe schema validation tool similar to zot it's a bit faster because it has a smaller bundle size because of its modular design it is also faster in terms of performance but pretty much the syntax the apis work the same way for you to create your schemas the only thing different is the concept of the pipes or the pipelines in valleybot where you can define different stages of transformations and validations for each of your fields or for your schema and then you can either parse it in a way that throws an error or safely parse it which then returns that error instead of throwing it which made sense in our context in a server action so that we can return that object to the front end to the client side and actually show some error messages if you have any questions like always hit me up in the comments and i'll see you in the next one Bye bye